Hello everyone, welcome back to my colonization series in Curl Space Program 1.2.2. The series was actually previously 1.2.1 until this episode, so I've done some upgrading and hopefully everything works just fine. But we begin this episode with a note that we do have enough science for nuclear propulsion, so I intend to get nuclear propulsion and it is time to make a space tug. So that is the first thing I'm going to be working on. But we do have a mission underway to Minmus and our only extant contract is to well we've got two contracts to build a surface outpost on Minmus but we have to have two scientists at the outpost and we need to get scientific data from the surface of Minmus that'll be easy enough um, so yeah we've got that uh, outpost on its way but uh, a space tug would be interesting I've added a part well a couple of parts from space Y and in particular, oh heck, uh, maybe we have it already, so I'll show you in the VAB. But it's sort of a pedal adapter. I, I, I sort of want a different kind of cargo bay that can fit on the front of our vessels. And maybe maybe one of my uh, space tug variants will be uh, a cargo vessel like that. So I'll work in the VAB to build the stuff, and maybe if we have the part unlocked, I'll show it to you. Uh, it looks like we've got a lot of tourist contracts here. Scan Kerbin for resources is a big thing, but not very lucrative. Um, the Keo station orbit, only if we're desperate. Kersey Kerbin's gonna have to deal with it himself or herself. Uh, that's not very... No, it's herself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not very lucrative there, though it would save us from some hiring costs. Hmm. They want a new surface outpost on the moon. I don't see what benefit that could give us. Well, I mean, we could just add it to our current location and hope it shares the resources. Oh, speaking of which, somebody suggested that maybe just slapping an antenna on our base would help it uh, get power from the from the reactor. So maybe I should try that. Let me see if we have anything like that at the base first, so we can check that out. But this this uh, surface outpost on the moon thing needs a uh, facility supporting at least eleven kerbals. So that's pretty big. It wants a viewing cupola, it wants a research lab. Doesn't sound like it's going to be a, a USI colonization sort of thing. Okay, well, we'll think about that. Okay, so the question is, well, we do have a, I mean, we could possibly grab an antenna and slap it onto the base. We'll leave Samrina Kerman over here. Let's switch over to the base. And uh, Georgie can EVA and grab that antenna and put it on here. It's a good idea to put an antenna on here anyway. Uh, let me see, did, did Georgie have a... Why? Oh, uh, Georgie isn't in the main thing. Uh, where is he? In the habitation module? Well, Georgie's not showing up anywhere, so I can check his inventory. Let's just have Georgie EVA. Okay, space let go. Might be carrying a spare, no, not carrying a spare antenna. Also not carrying a drill. I thought he had a drill. That's weird. Hmm. Didn't he, I mean, he had to have had a drill before to connect up that generator. Incidentally, for those who missed it, that generator is drilling for resources and converting carbonite into electric charge. So that's what's going on there. That has an antenna. Well, if that has an antenna, then the base should have an antenna already. Hmm. In order to really check the energy transmission situation, we'll have to turn that one off. But we can do that. Didn't think they would lose their inventory. Maybe it's because of the switch between KSP 1.2.1 and 1.2.2. That should make a difference to the inventory. That could cause problems if the inventory in the reactor unit is also changed. Okay, board. Georgie's inventory, nothing. Samina's inventory, nothing. Well, looks like we can't do what I wanted to do. Because without a drill, Georgie can't take that off. That's strange. Yeah, well now nobody has drills. Pretty sure I had drills. Hmm. Well, okay. 
I guess that well this does definitely has an antenna on it I mean technically that's docked to this it's all connected and it already has an antenna so what happens if I uh, deactivate the generator see electric charge is diminishing if it was a antenna that determined whether or not this would receive power from that power distribution unit there then we would be receiving power now from it because there is an antenna but there isn't there's no power start generator okay well now we're generating again okay so I think that's pretty conclusive so there's something else up well we can transmit data now so yeah communication is working somebody had suggested toggle power I, I don't think that does anything let's say we shut down generator now we've got power drain toggle power toggle power as you can see the power drain isn't affected by me clicking toggle power at all doesn't even go up or down just a little bit let me go to VAB and build something alright everyone so what I have here is not merely a space tug it is a cargo tug and the part I was talking about from space Y was this particular uh, pedal adapter part and what I'm hoping is that we can load this up with craft in here and I guess it'd be a lot simpler if we just didn't have the doors and we just dock stuff to it but this is nicer I feel and so we can have uh, craft docking with it and then it carrying them to uh, other locations and then proceeding on uh, the engine that we're using here is a Phoebus it is uh, yeah Phoebus atomic rocket motor which has a lot more thrust than normal nerve and let me try and find uh, let's close the Delta B stats for now okay so we've got a lot of atomic engines now to choose from and I don't remember which one this was from maybe stock extensions maybe something else but 180 kilonewtons instead of just 60 and it's got a little bit better ISB but it costs a lot and it's nine tons so it's pretty darn heavy I mean the normal uh, nerve is three tons so that's fair right uh, but because of the additional ISP it's not just three times more expensive it's actually four times more expensive so there's that but yeah it's more convenient altogether uh, these are mop propellant tanks these are actually mop propellant tanks because we don't want to have to refuel this with mop propellant constantly why are those off center hmm sometimes they sneak now they're they're sort of weird because of the way they are okay anyway uh, so we've got some upper pound because we don't want to top that off this is a liquid fuel tank up here and of course it's uh, uncrewed we have antennae we have solar panels we have radiators I don't know if they're big enough radiators but we have them and these small propellant pods also help us extend the RCS thrusters down here the center mass is actually here these are mainly for roll control around that center of mass and then we've got pretty good leverage with those that set up there and this set down here so yeah that's the idea and well it's a little bit more versatile than your normal space tug but also much heavier because of the doors and uh, by the way we don't strictly need this structural part it's it's not actually connected at the top but I didn't like the look of um, that just floating also there's a fuel flow issue if uh, you see here we've got the fuel line going to here and then down to here without a direct connection there's no fuel flow so I don't know I mean for all I know this whole thing could collapse on me on launch pad I've also added tweak scale to this particular part and scaled it up just a little bit uh, to fit everything else but uh, that didn't actually have tweak scale originally so I added that in I don't know if that's good it's it's legal I mean the cost went up and the mass went up but uh, I don't know if it's gonna mess with some practical factor 
when we actually try and use it. So the cargo tug itself, the price tag is 85,000 and of course 40,000 that is the engine. So that's not too bad when you think about it. And the oh, uh, we should probably assess the mass of it. The mass of it is 57 tons and empty of fuel is 23 tons. So, I mean, it could carry a pretty hefty load. Uh, it's got 7,478 meters per second there. Let me just check. Yeah, fuel flow is all right. Um, and with uh, 20, let's say 25 ton payload, it should have like 4,000 meters per second. So a normal colonization module, it, it doesn't lose much of that delta V right there. Okay, and then uh, as far as the rest of the rocket is concerned, we've got uh, expendable skipper upper stage, as you've seen before. And then we've got uh, this sort of recoverable uh, colonization core. And uh, you remember that's supposed to land. And it's actually got its uh, controller there. And we've got to try and recover that with stage recovery. We'll reserve some fuel so it can do a uh, well, that actually makes no sense for it to do a propulsive landing because the engines are over here and it's trying to land on that side. We'll reserve some fuel anyway just so it can manage its center of mass maybe. Uh, it would be helpful for it to have the center of mass down there. A stage recovery will be fooled by that though. It'll think that it's doing a propulsive landing on this side. So, I don't know. It's got parachutes. It's got... Uh, it's got the air brakes and everything. The goal is to land this on the eastern peninsula. So it'll actually sit down on land and we don't want to overburn so that it misses that. And then these boosters of course will be splashing down. We need to make sure that the launch clamps are in the right place. Okay, and then I'm missing my flag because I uh, put the 1.2.2 version in and I forgot the flag. Uh, we'll, we'll get the flag back soon. Lifting off of 1.35 uh, thrust weight ratio at sea level and reserving fuel in the core shouldn't make any problem as far as us getting to orbit. Okay, so that's the idea. Pretty costly and we'll only really be good if we can recover the three cores. So we'll see about that. Let's save and then launch. Okay, well it doesn't look like it's uh, preparing to blow up. That's a good start. Interesting. Just gonna get to orbit. Thrall up. SAS is on. Okay, here we go. Ignition. And launch. I really wanted a shielded docking port on top instead of having the docking port and nose cone, but I don't have the shielded docking port for some reason. I don't know which science it's supposed to be in, but apparently we don't have it. Yeah, having that little bit on top really ruins the look. Something classic about it though. Okay, we are well past the speed of sound, everything seems to be fine. Very stable. I'm gonna have to design a little craft to put into that uh, pedal fairing. Could be a very good exploration vessel, like the Jewel. Okay, getting ready for booster separation. Separation. Okay, the boosters are off. And they're not gonna bump into each other, so that's good. Let's hope they get recovered. We seem to have a bit of a wobble here, but it's not aerodynamics. So we're keeping an eye on our trajectory, and we want it a little bit past this eastern peninsula where, in theory, we would want to land core stage. Okay, well that's good enough. Alright, separation. Really, separation. Uh-huh, but I don't want to control this bit. Hello. No, 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 no. Yes. 
Okay. Oh, shucks. We blew something up. Oh, this isn't being controlled by this. Oh, zero, please. Zero, 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 zero. Totally didn't notice that. Okay, we have word that uh, the boosters were recovered with a terminal velocity of 7, which is higher than we would have liked, but at least they were recovered. Each of those is uh, refunded at about 48,000. We do want this uh, to re-enter. So uh, let's get it to 20 kilometers. We have plenty of time to apoapsis and then we'll let this uh, get destroyed. Unfortunately we didn't use too much fuel from it but hopefully that'll allow us to save the core. That's just another booster right there. Okay, separation. Okay, now for this Phoebus engine. Ignition. And let's extend all the things. I could have put more electric charge on here. Oh, uh, we should get rid of the nose cone. Might be a little bit late to do that. Let's sidestep the nose cone and also verify that our RCS is working well. Plenty of mop about 1,400 units, but this is a heavy vehicle, and again, we don't want to refuel that too often. Might be excessive, though, come to think of it. That's a lot of mop propellant. Could be used to refuel the vessels that go in the pedal. Speaking of which, this would be a good time to check that. Yep, uh, stability is pretty good here. We might want to move those docking ports a little bit further up. But uh, yeah, if, if you can imagine docking something right here, dock four of them and then they could pop out. Can't be too big, but could still be very useful. Alright, things are looking good for us here. Let's continue to make it to orbit. Oh, I think I added, yeah, I added persistent rotation because now I understand how it works. Um or not. Well, okay, maybe it's not quite working. This window doesn't, uh... Yeah, I actually need that window for it to work kind of thing. Well, I wanted it to be part of this. But, okay, I guess we'll have to deal with persistent rotation not being part of that. But yeah, now that I know I can set it to be sun relative and all that, that's helpful. Now the burns with this could be fairly long if we're really going interplanetary with it. But for now it's at an orbit of 102 by 86 and everything's looking good. Let's see the core stage uh, costing 50, well the cost was 69,000 we recovered it for 51,000 and terminal velocity of 4 because we reserved the fuel and it actually tried to do a propulsive landing but that's alright. Uh, it's all right. We got we had 32 parachutes said uh, one way or another it was gonna be recovered so That works. So didn't cost too much. Of course this all on it own on its own costs quite a bundle, but Well good, so next thing we need to do is that Minmus mission. Oh uh, Before I forget let's extend the interplanetary antennae Just in case I miss that later I should create a claw version of this to do asteroid missions once we get that unlocked. Okay, we are now in Minmus SOI with Rodsby Kerman having time warp through 13 days. And, well, let's just get closer and prepare to make orbit. Everything seems to be functional so far. We've got plenty of Delta V. The main thing is making sure we land where there are resources that we are interested in. And we did identify a location, though I will have to refresh my memory. Currently our inclination is, uh, well, suitable for hitting pretty much anywhere. 
This is an interesting looking base. Hopefully it can land safely, but of course Minmus is a relatively easy place to land. Alright, making orbit. Barely see any thrust coming from these, but there is a plume, so that's good. Well, that'll be a good starter orbit. Let's see about the resources. Focus on Minmus. Right, so... Illumina? Hmm... I need a better cutoff. I think it was this area. Let's see, dirt down there, exotic materials, yeah. It was, we wanted to be in the middle of the two blocks. See, there's a area up here that has one type of resource, and an area down here that has the other type. So we want to land right about there. Let's have uh, MechJab mark that out for us so we don't have to look for it constantly. So we'll say, pick target on map. I want to land right about there. And then half of our stuff will be up here. And then the other half will be collecting it down here, south of the base. But our base will be in the middle. Okay. Well, we're definitely not in line with that right now. Um, but we might as well not wait around. We should just do an inclination change. It's not like it's going to cost too much around here. Now, Minmus does rotate, so we have to make allowance for that. Let's say right around there first. Okay, let's just try to land there directly, I suppose. Do a little bit more of adjustment this way. Pull the orbit in this way. And allow for a bit more rotation. Let's do a bit of a roll to make sure that things look proper. And we're com oh well, persistent rotation though. Um, and we'll be coming down sharply. And once again, Minmus has rotated a bit too much. And we need to go east, it looks like. Well, still oodles of Delta V. We could easily bring this back up again and move it to some other location if we needed to. It wiggles a lot though. Wiggles a lot. I don't know if it will wiggle less if we turn on RCS or if it will wiggle more. Looks like the height where we're trying to land is 3.56 kilometers. So we'll watch out for that. Doesn't look like we've done much science on Minmus here. Of course, I gave myself uh, all the science based on the previous colonization series, so we got a head start like that. There's a lot of science we haven't done in this particular save. It's a very severe trajectory, so I'm a bit worried. Just that I won't time things right. I also don't want to land in this particular gulf here. Canyon. We didn't target that. No, uh, we're targeting right on the edge of it though. Well, difference between our intended landing location and our current projected landing location is only 65 meters. That's pretty good. But I still want to avoid that slope. So there's a definite line here, you can see in the ground. We want to be on this side of that. Even if it pushes us away from where I plotted us to be. Looking good. Sort of aligned with that edge on the proper side of it. I don't think we need this anymore. Just need to focus on landing safely. Gotta turn RCS on just to add some more stability, hopefully. Okay, it's an interesting look.
There's our shadow. Nope, don't go up. Okay, we've set down, finally. Unfortunately, we have that stupid decoupler down there. I guess Rodsby could get out and destroy it. Right? Maybe? I don't know. I've got F5 for safety before doing that. EVA? I don't know if he needs any tools to destruct it. Disassemble part. Only engineers can disassemble parts. Well, okay. Well, that's fair enough. So we need to send two scientists and an engineer over here. And then we can really get things working. Grab. Up, up, up. Board. Oh, no. Go up again. Board. Yeah, uh, otherwise, um, hmm, we need to go back to the reactor. It looks like they think that HAB has been ex has expired for Georgie and Samrina. Uh, but Rodsby over here, uh, plenty of time. Electric charge is more than 16 days. Those huge solar panels will see to that. Um, let's go back to the main base and make sure HAB has not expired. We do not want these Kerbals turning into tourists. Okay, here we are, and uh, it's just it just wasn't reading the sharing of the vessel within 150 meters. They're fine. They've got a year and 257 days. I hope it'll continue to read that. We we really ought to pay attention to Sigmor Kerman, uh, who's in a transfer pod launch. His electric charge seems to have expired. I I don't know exactly what Sigmor Kerman was supposed to do, so. Let's also take a peek at him before wrapping things up. I think uh, with two successful missions and, um, well, actually, we could easily fulfill this uh, scientific data from Surface of Minmus. Okay, first we'll do that, and then we'll look at Sigmor Kerman, and then wrap it up. And uh, because two, success two successful missions is a good way to go, and I don't want to tempt fate. But next time we'll be uh, doing a bunch of stuff that we already know we're going to be doing, including two, sending two scientists and an engineer to Minmus, uh, sending the second module that's currently in orbit around the moon down to the surface here at the base, and then doing a supply drop here uh, just to make sure everything is all right. Okay, but uh, let's do some science. Let's not be complicated about it. Take surface sample. Uh, keep experiment for now. Uh, EV report. Keep experiment. And, of course, we will plant a flag a little bit further away from the base. Did he have some inventory? No. Okay, Minmus Base Alpha. Target this flag for landing. Not really, but hey, maybe it'd work. Right, and crew report. Okay, we can transmit that first. That filled the contract, so that's good. And we can do this EV report. And I guess we'll send the surface sample stuff as well. We can take more of it later so that we get more value possibly land a research lab over here to process it, that kind of thing. So we've gotten some science out of this. Alright, let's check on what's his name. What's his name? Sigmor Kerman and see what's up with him. Ah, okay, so Sigmor is in this little space taxi. He's got electric charge. Uh, how's everything else for him? Habitability, 27 days it seems like is the updated number and we can ignore the colonization 3 base because that one day is messed up because it's not counting all the vessels around uh, but this is just a transfer vehicle this this is exactly what we need to get the two scientists and an engineer over to Minmus but then we have to have a way of landing them this isn't uh, a thing that lands so that's the problem 
we would need something else to land them on the surface. It doesn't have any thrusters for that. Otherwise, uh, it's got some Delta V to work with to move people around. And it's got some space for them. I don't actually know how many seats there are in that Merrill Crew cabin expansion module. Uh, its purpose is to carry peoples. Okay, so that's where Sigmore is. And we'll have to figure out what to do with him. Well, I'll leave it at that, and we know what we're going to do in the next episode, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.